Drivers had to pull over to the side of the road to manually wipe the windshield, or even tried to do it while driving, an absurd and dangerous task, but how did they evolve to this day? In the early 1900s, Mary Anderson was traveling on a train during a wintry day. The freezing rain that was falling made visibility through the streetcar's windshield extremely poor. At that time, there were no automatic windshield wipers as we know them today. After her experience on the train, Mary Anderson began brainstorming an innovative design. A windshield wiper that could be operated from inside the vehicle, improving visibility and avoiding annoying interactions with winter weather. Over several months, she honed her idea into a working prototype. A set of wiper arms made of wood and rubber, operated by a lever located near the steering wheel. When the lever was actuated, a spring-loaded mechanism moved the wiper arm over the windshield, clearing snow, rain, and debris. On November 10, 1903, Mary Anderson received a U.S. patent for her window wiping device. Her design allowed the windshield wiper to be removed when it was not needed, avoiding obstructing the driver's vision in good weather. However, the road was not easy. Many detractors questioned his invention, claiming that the wiper could dangerously distract drivers. Despite his ingenuity, Anderson was never able to attract investment for his technology. One of the main rejections came from a Canadian manufacturer who saw no use for his invention. At that time, the automotive industry had not yet reached the exponential growth it would enjoy in the following decades. Although by 1916 windshield wipers were standard on most vehicles, Anderson's patent had expired, depriving her of any royalties or financial recognition for her revolutionary invention. And Mary was not alone in facing this battle for recognition and income. I'll tell you later about other inventors who struggled with the same frustration. Another inventor who left her mark on the development of windshield wipers was Charlotte Bridgewood. In 1917, she received a patent for a storm electric wiper. This invention is considered the first automatic windshield wiper that was powered by electricity. Although a significant innovation, Charlotte's design incorporated rollers instead of wiper blades, which probably contributed to its lack of commercial success. Automatic wipers with wiper blades, were first introduced by brothers William and Fred Fulberth of Cleveland, Ohio. Their invention provided motion to the wiper blades by directing exhaust air from the engine manifold to an actuator that moved the blades back and forth over the windshield. Although the wiper blade design proved more popular with consumers than the use of rollers, the method of operation using engine manifold air caused the wipers to accelerate or decelerate with the vehicle. This led to the search for a more consistent and efficient wiping speed. A year later, the most successful windshield wiper company in history, Tricontinental Corporation, known as Trico, was founded in 1917 by John Oishii in Buffalo, New York. The inspiration for his invention came in 1916, following an accident involving a cyclist due to poor visibility. Although the cyclist survived, Oishii was motivated to improve the windshield wiper mechanism. On December 14, 1920, Oishii received the patent, windshield wiper and the like. This innovative design included a spring-operated arm, ensuring constant wiper pressure against the glass. The growth of companies such as Trico, along with Bosch, introduced a rear window wiper system in 1926, demonstrated that windshield wiper systems were becoming widely accepted and recognized for their practical utility. Although we were still a long way from today's windshield wiper system, the next revolutionary innovation in the field was the intermittent wiper system, developed by Robert Kearns of Detroit, Michigan. Kearns' motorized windshield wiper technology would be installed on millions of vehicles over the years. Kearns received several patents for his innovations, presented his technology to Ford, but never received compensation. Discovering that his invention was used in most automobiles of the 1970s led to a series of nervous breakdowns. Eventually, he sued several automakers, seeking licensing rights, and received tens of millions in settlements. 
However, the decades of legal battles severely affected his mental health and personal life. Currently, the most common configuration is the tandem system, where both wipers move simultaneously forward and backward. This system usually consists of one motor, which is connected to the wiper arms, all located just below the windshield. Space in this area is limited due to the instrument panel and engine compartment. The opposing arm pattern, where the wipers face each other, is often employed when the tandem system does not fit due to center space limitations. Although the tandem pattern is more economical, the opposed arm pattern provides better wiper coverage, although it requires two motors and more advanced electronics to synchronize them and prevent the wiper blades from hitting each other. The current trend of using one short arm and one long, curved arm responds to the need to keep it above the windshield as windshield designs become flatter and more aerodynamic. This curved design helps prevent air from lifting the wiper blades while driving. Regardless of the configuration of the wipers, they must comply with regulations, which require the windshield to be covered in at least three areas. The area directly in front of the driver must be 99% clean. A larger area that includes the front and part of the passenger side at 94% and the wider area which covers most of the windshield at 80%. Advanced technologies are currently being developed. A prime example is the work of British manufacturer McLaren, which is investigating the use of ultrasonic force fields to clean windshields. However, we do not know what the future holds.